Good morning, Bookless Classroom. How are you? I hope that you are just awesome, B. I hope you are just be awesome. Something like that. I had a call on my sign, and I don't think I improved my chalkboard. I added the, um, I'm sorry to say, I added the snowflake up there, which goes with the ribbon, right? Because the ribbon has snowflakes on it. And this fell off of a mitt, an oven mitt, that somebody had given me, I, I promise you, it must have been 25 years ago. And so I'm a repurposed kind of gal, right? Reused, repurposed, whatever kind of gal. And I happened to wash it off and I left it up on the counter there by the dishes. And I saw it yesterday and I was like, all right, this is going on my chalkboard. And I think it cheesed it up is what it did. It totally cheesed it up, but that's okay. Is that what that cheesy stuff has been lately? You guys are telling me I'm cheesy. Oh, screw you. Screw you and double screw you. This is a little cheesy. I know how to, to admit when things are a little cheesy. The rest of it is not. The rest of it is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. New chalkboard. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. And we are doing a little bit of changing things up a little bit. So I have been doing, oh gosh, I can't get into it because if I go into it, you know I'm going to go down what would be here considered a rabbit hole, not just a deep dive. But I am doing a deep dive on World War I. So the next stage after Reconstruction, I started actually getting into... Herbert Hoover, which is so funny to me. There's so many things to begin to look up and start doing deeper dives in. Like, you know what I want to do a deeper dive in? Check this out. Alphabet soup. I know. Why? <clears throat> because it is clear to me that they were doing a game with acronyms, right? And so, in response, the other side started doing a game with acronyms. And this is FDR, so Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, with his New Deal. And so I'm getting this. As you know, I have got a series of books that I got, you know, a whole bunch of books I talked about from Commerce Township Library Sale. This was one of those, another series of books that I got. I probably only put this in the bag, maybe something else, a couple other things, because it was $4 for a whole bag of books. So I didn't cram it, right, because I got such, oh my gosh. But let me show you, and, and I want to show you this because it, all of this does relate. Hold on. So, <clears throat> it is a series from, I am very happy to say, Time Life Books, because I believe that the first one that I took and was reading uh, around Reconstruction Time, although I'd have to get it off the shelf, I'm pretty sure I wrote all over it. Now, you know I think books are sacred. I do. But only if they represent a person's word, right? So a word play right there, right? The word, your word, needs to represent the truth, right? And then the book becomes sacred. Isn't that awesome? I mean, just stop and think about that for a minute. That if your, your written word represents truth, even if it's flawed to a certain extent, right? Even if it's flawed to a certain extent, but that your research represented truth as we know it right now, 
like my program, truth is I know it right now. Maybe there are truths I am completely unaware of, right? Likely so, <laughs> likely so, like a timeline, like, like time life, right? Like time. And I just find this wordplay to be the most magnificent thing going on. Um, and deciphering it, right? So alphabet soup. So they're calling FDR's, even with FDR, right? So he had the WPA, he started the WPA, he started the PWS. What? What? What, what are you saying? And that's, so he got this. Uh, so I'm doing, I am almost going down a rabbit hole. Not quite. So he gets this alphabet soup characterization where, where it's just alphabet soup. Who even knows what he's talking about? But the poor people sure did. The poor people sure did, right? And then they start saying the same thing. You came from rich. Who are you? Well, so what? It's because the poor people were championing him, right? The people, the people we're championing FDR because for the first time somebody is doing something for them. I would I would wonder where when Campbell's started with the alphabet soup. And who is this Campbell guy? What side of the fence does he fall on? Is he falling on? Who's this Campbell guy? Because he's making alphabet soup and FDR is clearly making the upper crust very impatient, very agitated with it, right? With what is going on. And still today, people are, you know, willing to criticize money that went to the people as opposed to money that went to capitalism. It's very interesting, and I'm going to read it to you because I think it's so important. And if I have to read it again, I'll read it again. I wasn't planning to read it to you, but I am now. So... What FDR was known for was a lot of things. The New Deal was one of them, which rich people called the Raw Deal. But he was also known for Oh, I must not... Ugh. See, because see, because I don't know the years. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, and I'm not even gonna say. So I've got I because it's I've been reading about him in one of these books, and so it seems to me that the response has been uh, that by his detractors. They began the same game. But FDR was really only playing this game in response to what? In response to what would he have been playing this game? He would have been play, playing this game Yeah, I don't have the book. I don't have the book with with me. So 30s, decade between the 30s and 40s, 33 to 45. No, because he was, he was four terms. I'm wondering if they wrote about him. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong math. And Oh, speaking of math, Travis. Oh, oh, that was a good one. That two months, eight weeks, I did that. I totally know I made that mistake. But I had to, it wasn't worth it to dwell on, right? I said a couple months, so a couple months. But I knew it was 12 weeks. And and that was, that was planned not by me, but by somebody who had better advice, right? So um, I wasn't sure... 
if I'd made it there exactly on 12 week, only 12, but I did make that math mistake. I said two months. I do know I did that. Okay. So FDR's alphabet soup response. I, I thought I had it right here. And I'm not going to go into it. Who oh, I should, though. I really should. Which was the letter, because he was known for his radio show. So here was a president who did a radio show. Oh, hi! I am, too! That everybody could relate to and was honest. And what he did was he told, he was a teacher. And he was teaching the audience. And so in the, the book, in the Time Life book, which was also Time Warner, which was interesting too, which was, was that War, that was Warner Brothers, right? Time Life, Life Magazine, Warner Brothers. And I have a feeling my dad was actually involved in all of that in one way or another because Warner Brothers was Bugs Bunny and I'm pretty sure my dad was involved in Bugs Bunny. You're despicable. Mm, I'm pretty sure... He was. I know, almost uh, I'm certain he was involved in Mickey Mouse to the extent that Mighty Mouse used to be the hero and Mickey Mouse used to be the villain. And I clearly remember that. How could anyone raise Mickey Mouse to the level that he has been raised to when he was when he started out as the villain? Right, and now he's this lovable. He's he's a, he's this whatever for kids. He was the villain, and it was Mighty Mouse who came in. I mean, think about Mickey. Mickey's the name of a gangster. Mickey Mouse used to be in the oldest cartoons a gangster, and it was Mighty Mouse who was the hero. And what did Disney do? He took the criminal, and perception is everything, and turned him into a hero. Why? Because he has on, what does he have on? A tuxedo, right? He's got on big ears that he can hear everything. Who's big brother, Mickey? Who's big brother? Mm. Follow the money, which is what was going on in FDR. And so he had the radio show. And the excerpt was in the radio show, What Happens with Banks. So banks, and it's capitalism. He defined capitalism, which I've said before on this program, which simply is taking taxpayer dollars and investing those in Wall Street, right? They may be, even now with gambling, they're probably gambling it. So, oh, and by the way, to have advertised for fans only, that's advertised on legitimate whatever, they were soliciting me for, for sex trafficking. Fans only were, and everyone knows it. And everyone knows it. Everyone. I would be the last person to know it, except for that when, my, when I had my Love and Sex in the 21st Century series, every time I put out a live video, one of those would pop up in the comments. And I had to keep blocking, blocking, blocking. Fans only, fans only, fans only. And one time, I didn't click on it, I knew I didn't click on it, and penises galore. Fans only. Like it's some kind of reputable business. They're taking your babies, and everyone else on the planet knows it. The only people who don't are the people in South Korea. I'm sorry, or North Korea. I'm sorry, the United States. The United States. And I'm sorry, I, I did make the mistake of South and North. So North Korea, I did make that mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake. But I went to go for the North Korea to, no, I'm sorry, the United States of America. Clearly hiding real truth and real evidence from us, just like in North Korea. And, and the blood-stained white snow, I mean, come on. I don't know who the bad guy is, honestly. I don't know who the bad guy is, but I keep still thinking it's China. <laughs> it's not because I won't think it's American. I can love. That's what I hear from America. We always knew it was I can. Amir. I can love. 
Mm. Can you? Can you? Because we're getting rid of you right now. I mean, that door. Look. Just look behind you. Look in front of you. The door's closing. I've had it. For those people who cannot be convinced, come on. I'm, I'm a mom. My mom told me I was Mother Nature. I couldn't believe it. Trav, I was going to tell you this the other day. I wasn't going to. I thought about it after you left. I was appalled. Right? I said, I asked her. So who's, we were talking, so who's Mother Nature? This just came up in my memory. So who's Mother Nature? I don't know how the conversation started before that. And she said, you are. And I said, oh my God, don't even, I said, don't say that. That's like, I think I said blasphemy. I'm pretty sure I used that word. I'm not sure if that was the right word to use at the time. And even at the time, I didn't know if it was the right word. Heresy. Um, you know, why would, and I was like, why would you say that? And she backed off right away. And then I said, well, good, because the whole world would be after me. If, if anyone thought that, because she had explained Mother Nature like God. And I'm like, well, who is God? She didn't say I was. She, I, she said, I was Mother Nature, is what she said. And I refuted it. And I knew that if anybody else, I said, don't say that. But Mama knew a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, back to the, oh, I guess we did go down a rabbit hole right there. For sure we did. So, um, but I think that that makes sense with my driving nature to protect children. I think it makes sense. Um, you know, yeah. My, my, um, I make mistakes, right? So, so I can't be raised to this level of, I mean, I make mistakes and I lie. I remember my husband said one time, um, to me, he said, you just lied. <laughs> and I laughed and I was like, what would ever make you think I, I don't lie? I mean, I have a hard time lying. I do. And I do, but lie for certain circumstances but it's not a cause, my lie, I mean, I lie if it's none of your business lie. I could clearly think of the lie that I told when he said that to me and it was a none of your business kind of lie, right? And so, uh, but it was to a person that I'm almost sure was his bodyguard. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, so he said, I didn't think you could lie. So this is, there are certain things going... I'm like, what would make you think I can't lie, first of all? And second of all, but I do find it hard to lie. I do find it hard to lie. And I, but I've thought more recently of some lies, kind of contemplating on this. Can I, I mean, I clearly can tell a lie. I've never said I couldn't tell a lie. But I found it hard. And I've always found it a better choice to tell the truth. So I try really hard not to lie. And only when I think, you know, like I said, it's none of your business. So the lie is meaningless and it's better off just tell the lie than get into complications about the subject, right? Some people I'll agree, I won't agree with, but I'll, you know, give them the impression I agree with them, you know, without saying anything kind of thing. Anyway, anyway, so back to FDR with the alphabet soup. This is in response to the language in, in all um, the lawyerese, right? In all the legalistic, the legalistic language that has put, that brought people to this country unwittingly becoming slaves. Once again, the story continues without what? 
without a vote while what? Paying taxes. How, how is that happening in this country right now? I don't know. I mean, I don't know, but I would have to say immigrants for sure. Paying taxes, right? They are paying taxes without a vote. They don't count as citizens. They do count as citizens. They get our services, but they're paying taxes. So shouldn't they get our services? They don't even get a vote. So shouldn't they get our services? These are questions that when in the light of day, which is coming up, our festival of lights, right? When in the light of day, those questions can be answered relatively easily, right? I can say it's probably not a great idea to separate children from their parents. That's probably not a good idea. It probably is a good idea to say every mother should have an opportunity to earn money if they want to. Every mother, period. That's a really good idea, isn't it? I'm sorry, COVID, COVID, COVID. Yeah, a COVID operation. That's exactly what that was and still is. COVID operation, nothing going on here, covert, underground, all kinds of things are happening with U.S. labs all over this planet. And those labs are being run by, I don't know, but I do know that they are hurting people for the reason that they believe they are lesser, period. You, it's like this to me. It's like this. It's like on a planet, maybe the moon or, you know, maybe a moon, but maybe a planet with all kinds of mirrors, they can see this is the good life. But what are they? Right. So they're aliens. We know that. But let's think of them more like they're, they are flies. Just interested. That's all. They're not gods. They're flies. They have decided to evolve to the greatest level of observation, which is intelligence, data collecting, a fly, mm -mm -mm. cleaning his eyes, right? It's like I do. Look at the manual way she cleans her eyes when all she needs to do is lick her fingers and then draw her hands over her eyeballs. Isn't that what an intelligent fly would say? That would get the job done. Isn't that what a fly would say? So let's say that there's a planet far, far away that, that with the mirrors all in their eyes and everything, they can see exactly what's going on to the minute detail. And they're collecting data like AI, right? I'm trying to put the language together. Like AI and collecting data. Well, what would that fly think of me? What would a fly think of me? Especially if a fly had all the data, you know, kind of like a chip has all the data. So let's say the fly had all the data, okay? And the fly knows he's got all the data. And you can have all the data on a fly, couldn't you? Because you can have all the data on a microchip, can't you? So you can have all the data on a fly. So let's say that the fly is still collecting data through observation. But what does the fly think of me? What does the fly think of me? Nothing. Think of what a fly thinks of me. Nothing. And if a fly could sit over there and throw up on me enough so to devour me, the fly would be totally okay with that, right? So what does a fly think of me? Absolutely nothing. And that would be the mindset that you would need to do what we've seen done to humans. It is the mindset that you would have to have the mindset of a fly that's observing something. And here's the caveat of the whole thing, that the fly finds beautiful. 
The fly can't stop looking at it. Look at all that was created. Look at how beautiful, even from space, this planet is with all of its blue skies and its green trees. I wore this on purpose today. I don't have any white. I didn't to, to necessarily put on with this outfit. So we'll just do this, this sprinkle of white in my hair, okay? But isn't that what like the, the winter season looks like, right? There's green trees. It should be darker green, right? And bluer skies, it should be a lighter blue. But that's really what the winter skies with the beautiful white snow. We don't like to see gray, dirty black snow, right? We don't like to see gray skies. And we don't like to see, you know, uh, dead trees like my neighbor has right over there in the middle of his yard. You can't see it with the glare, but a dead tree. We don't like to see dead trees and dead leaves. We don't like to see that. We want the we want to see the grass underneath and the beauty. So even from a distance, an AI creature could find this planet and stare at it all day and all night and not want to do anything except for what? Wouldn't know how to do anything except for what? Devour it. Simply devour it. So they decide to, here's your story. So they decide to devolve enough to dominate, but not become a peer, not become a human. They become a human being, somebody being human, right? They're not human. They're being human. My husband hated the, the use of the word human being. He, he's like, they're humans. Like, what the F are you talking about? Well, because human beings are being human. Oh, now I see the difference. He knew those fly creatures were all over here. It's the reason why my windows sometimes are filled with flies. Dear Jesus. And their eyeballs all over the place and they're puking on things so that they could devour them. Well, it sure seems like the system of things, doesn't it? It sure seems like our words are just a bunch of gibberish and alphabet soup, doesn't it? And what you take is a big spoonful of it, and it doesn't mean anything unless what? Unless I add the saint clause. What? Well, the St. Clause is, is that I would never do anything that would ever hurt you because we're Christians and though they're the saints. So we're just like, I'm on the way to being a saint. So don't, so trust me, the St. Clause, where all the blood is spilled red and white from the St. Clause all over the poor people while the rich people get fat and steal their loot. <laughs> How's that possible? Flies can't live in the winter. Hmm, you know. You know. Look underneath that belly. Who knows? Okay, so. Same theme going on again and again. Even in those reindeer, as I said. Even in those poor little reindeer. The big fat man trying to pull a sleigh all the way through the air. For Pete's sake, get your kids off of that drug. You can give them gifts. Wouldn't they love it if they knew they came from you? Wouldn't they love you? And wouldn't they be destroyed when they find out that you told them a lie instead? Oh, don't take the credit. Don't take the credit for being kind. Don't take the credit. Let a fat man with blood all over him take the credit. Who's stealing, because we could see Christmas is nothing if it's not unequal. Okay, so what we're doing now after all of that, this week we are spending our time wrapping up. We're going to see where we end up getting with this book. Hopefully we're going to start zipping through it. But this time I spend doing this, it's not so planned 
right? Because it doesn't have to be planned because I know that my Savior comes in and helps me put this nice package together and with a lot of energy as well, right? So that's what he does for me to help deliver this. But I do like to draw the bridges between what might seem to be rabbit holes or deep dives that are not associated that are just ADHD bringing back a wandering mind, right? No, it's not that. It is connected to this. And what this is, is, is I'm going to try and get this done for the next week. We're going to concentrate in our classes starting next week on Tuesday, December 5th on getting our minds wrapped around what is a saint clause. What is the saint clause? So I want to spend our efforts and I do, as you can see now, my mind is naturally jumping to the next stage, right? And although 30s to 40s is the next, is not the next stage, right? World War I is the next stage. We need to, I need to, as a teacher, look at content, because I'm not a historian really. Now I am. F you. I'm... <laughs> Uh, what I mean by that is for those people who are like, oh, I'm a historian. Yeah, screw you. And you're the way you taught history. I don't even know what's going on there. And, you know, somebody proved to me that dinosaurs existed because, uh, you know what? I don't care. Somebody said to me, you don't tell me you have a PhD. Screw you. What do you know about dinosaurs? Only what you've been told. Go, 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 go. Mm. Yeah, oh, and all you guys who aren't getting our guy like when she does that. Ah! So, what I want to bring your attention to are all of the things that Judy Dodge Cummings has given you for your own interest and for your own deep dives, right? We know all kinds of things that she has made great efforts into ensuring she is speaking to a millennial crowd, a crowd that where she's constantly allowing your mind to wander like an expert, right? Like an expert, allowing your mind to wander while then in turn bringing it back. And in doing so, 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 um, covertly, right? So covertly, you're learning and you don't even know. Your, your mind is le learning in a metacognitive way. How should the mind work? It should work by teaching it patterns that it goes through automatically. She's teaching you a pattern of wandering and bringing it back. Wandering mind, bringing it back. That's how you do it, William James. Judy Dodge Cummings, as much as she's the heat she's taken, she did her job. She did her She's doing her job. I'm sure she's, she is still doing it. So as we continue this week, hopefully to finish this book, we're going to start diving through it. You know how I do this. I give you probably 45%, 45 percent, 45 minutes. So probably 60% of the program is the introduction. Then hopefully it is this, it's always been that way with me. Always been that way with me. The introduction is, yeah, 60% of the show. And then we just plug in through the show. We plug in, plug in, plug in. So think about all of the things that she has given you to think about, right? So, oh my gosh, it's it really is incredible. So she starts with the map. So if you want to explore what was going on in the territories, I'm still not sure about Michigan and that Northwest Territory there. I'm still not sure about it, especially because I do know that our money is different than what it used to be. And I don't know how that money change happened. So my guess is that somebody else is in charge here in Michigan. So what does that Michigan Territory have to say? And likely there's something in there about some clause about a timeline in there, right? So map and, and then what's next in here? I mean, do you see how things work and how he works and about how he really does know every hair in your head because uh, he's planning all this. So what is next then? Okay, well, next is the timeline then that they give us, the timeline. So again, you can look at the territories, you can look at the timelines as they relate to the territories and then begin, you know, answering your own questions, doing your own deep dives, 
not dark, scary rabbit holes, but deep dives, right? Deep dives where we're not afraid of what we're finding out. We're excited about what we're finding out. There's the difference. Now, um, I haven't quite understood this reconstruct here. So this is probably this, this purple little box here has probably got a theme. There's a reason for that purple box. It's probably a thread all the way through, just like vocabulary is a thread all the way through, right? So all the way through there is, is it on the last page? Yeah, there's vocab lab, right? There's inquire and investigate. There is, in the end, uh, th well, this is how to investigate something. So there's an investigation there. There is all kinds, so inquire and investigate. All the way through there, there are these little tidbits of inf information, text to the world, key questions, and then these sort of, I don't know, Historical, historical references. That's what I would call these in, in sort of these brown areas because that's where we get pictures from Harper's Weekly. That's where we have gotten those, um, those, uh, these, these things, whatever, I forgot what you call those, right? So those things, whatever, scan, the scan code, right? The bar, whatever, it's not a barcode, it's a scan code. <clears throat> so, those are all the way through here. Heart pictures from Harper's, right? Next steps. Good grief. So many things. And even in this, I was just going to say here, and, and the, and the um, magnifying glass. So, so, so you can even look visually to see if there's a thread that goes through all the purple boxes. What's the reason for all of it? They say reconstruct, but I'm not sure what they're adding as far as the reconstruct goes. They've got the magnifying glass, right? So they have got um, the scan codes. So she has got several different ways for you to take a deep dive either across all of those sort of mediums, right? All across that media. Or within each one of those, right? So under one of the my uh, under one of the magnifying glasses, you would do this, or you might look through all the magnifying glasses to see what she's trying to get at with those magnifying glasses. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now we're ready. All those associations that we're making is getting you ready for what is coming up, right? We're, we are going to breeze through the rest of this book, Reconstruction. We spent 21 days. This is day 21 on it, right? So day 21 takes us 21 days to learn something. So we, start, we get the flow of this. That's true. Through that. So we have 21 days, three weeks, that we got the flow of this. And, the, and we know where it's going, and now we know where we want to take our own deep dives. And this is what this classroom is, is, is about. I mean, it's not just about that we have our grand theme, which we haven't talked about, which is just, you know, why do we screw up humanity every hour of every day when we claim that we love it? Kind of like the Saint Clause. Ah! It's because of the Saint Clause. That's why. Coming down hard. You're not wearing red for nothing. We are coming down hard on the St. Claus. I was really bothered by that. I put a LinkedIn, a Santa, Claus, a Santa Claus thing on LinkedIn in the history of Santa Claus. And I was really, and, I, and then I put in there the story of how I, um, you know, the secret, the secret of Santa Claus, the Saint Claus, came out in our family. And it was one of the saddest days of my life. It was one of the biggest mistakes of my life. And I and I remember now recently that my husband asked me not to do that. That hot, and, and oh, that goes back to the lies that I could lie. Mm, I kept that secret. And it and 
Yeah, it was not a good choice. It was not a good choice. So parents, it's not a good choice. It's, it's not. There are all kinds of ways we can celebrate this holiday without having a saint clause in the holiday, right? Yeah. So, so do what you will with that. A saint, I'll explain what a saint clause is, but you can see it is, you know, connected to Santa Claus. It's the saint clause. Without a clear plan for how to, so, so we do understand now where we're going with this. We're going to finish the book. We're going to breeze through it. You are going to do your deep dives if this is your thing. If this isn't your thing, you probably left me, you know, 10 days ago on this, this, bookless classroom if this isn't your thing but if it is your thing and it is for me the roots of eugenics it is very much my thing which is the reason why I become such a historian is because of the roots of eugenics thank you Gregory Michael Dorr oh my gosh oh my gosh I haven't gotten the book and I know I have to pay for it but I don't have a credit card Trav there's a few things I need shampoo that's not a small one. But my shampoo. Can't go to the dollar store. Sorry. Yeah. Again, I'm not like grandma. Wash my hair with ivory soap. Without a clear plan for how to run an impeachment, the 54 senators figured things out as they went along. The House managers insisted that the impeachment trial was not a criminal trial. They did not need to prove the president was guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Impeachment, they argued, was a political process concerned with the president's fitness for office or abuse of power. Rather than, rather than whether he had committed an actual crime. Now, I'm rereading. I know we read this. I was probably someplace else, but it doesn't really matter because we want to remember that Andrew Johnson, I know it's Johnson is his first name, Andrew. Again, with the Andrew Jackson and the Andrew Johnson. Alan Dershowitz here. When were you born? William D. Kelly. Bill Kelly, Congressman Bill Kelly, you mean like William Kelly, my brother-in-law's dad? Likely so. I mean, you know, these last similar last names, when you're talking about somebody like, what was it, Attila the Hun, who spread the seed all over Attila the Hunville, <laughs> has got some... What, 600 million offspring? What the heck? What? <laughs> Whoa. Rough times. Mm. Today? I don't mean back then. Assholes still spreading their seeds like it's on a super soaker. And it's not. <laughs> and it's not. Okay. The Senate did rule that President Johnson did not have to appear as a witness. Johnson's lawyers had lobbied hard for this. Johnson was well known for his scrappy nature and fondness for calling his enemies names. His lawyers would speak for him. When opening statements were finally delivered on March 30th, the, the nation was riveted. So many spectators wanted to watch the proceedings that the Senate distributed 1,000 tickets each day to the trial to control the flow. House manager Benjamin Butler rose to present the prosecution's opening statement. Once a formidable courtroom attorney, Butler was known to be a dynamic speaker. The chambers hushed. Senators leaned forward in their seats. Spectators in the gallery leaned forward in their seats. And now you also know because we've done it many times, how you can get speeches as well. You can go to the website, the Library of Congress, right? This book has m much information about speeches. I also have my two books of speeches, right? 501 uh, Best Known Speeches as well as another book over here, but a lesser of lesser whatever. Um, of lesser depth consequence, whatever. Um, but then I've looked up other speeches too. So again, I normally would stop when I found, and, and we spent a lot of time 
on um, Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Stanton, right? And their speeches. So we spent a lot of time on that. Again, this is for you to do your deep dives on it and come up with, if you are a speech lover or you want more evidence, now is the time where I'm going to be plowing through this because I'm getting anxious to do the next set of things. Doesn't mean I'm not going to continue with this and, you know, go back on my word because, you know, I'm not sure where exactly we're going, but that's the plan. That's my plan. So it's not my word. It's my plan. You'll easily know if I fail December 5th if we're still in this book. House manager Benjamin Butler rose to present the prosecution's opening statement. Once a formidable courtroom attorney, Butler was known to be a dynamic speaker. The chambers hushed. Senators leaned forward in their seats. Spectators in the gallery leaned forward in their seats. Not this time. Instead, Butler clutched a sheaf of papers in his hands and delivered a somber argument packed with legal citations that sent some listeners into a stupor. In the weeks since the House had impeached Johnson, tempers had cooled. So here we're beginning the alphabet soup, which is what I think that FDR was giving people from this era a big dose of their own legal linguistics. Acrobats. Legal acrobat acrobatic linguistics. How about that? Uh, not so much. Not so much sounding like it's a, a graceful acrobatic linguistic act, Dr. Farovich. That was closer. <clears throat> Radicals believe their best chance at securing a conviction was to present a rational legal argument that Johnson had violated the Tenure of Office Act. But by the end of the, his opening statement, Butler was back to his passionate form. He said that, so he, he got people to tune out right away is what he did. He got people to tune out, and then only those people that were, you know, looking for more meat and potatoes. Now he starts speaking to them and using more theatrics. By the end of his opening statement, Butler is back to passionate form. He said that Johnson was the elect of an assassin who only became president because of a foul murder, and therefore he really was not even a legitimate leader. Harsh words. He's talking about, of course, Abraham Lincoln, who was, who was murdered. Not. dum de dum de dum de dum Let's go to the theater. Who's going to be there? I'm going to be there. Lincoln's going to be there. But you just finished the war. Some people are really mad at you. I'm going to be there. People need to see me out and about. Okay, Lincoln. So it's a good look. And therefore, he really was not a legitimate leader. Harsh words. President Johnson was defended by five attorneys. Their argument was that Johnson had not violated the Tenure of Office Act because Stanton had actually been appointed by President Lincoln. Therefore, Johnson was not required to keep a former president's cabinet member on the job. For two long months, the trial proceeded a total of 25 prosecution and 16 defense witnesses testified. Moderate Republicans from states that bordered South feared that if they voted to convict the president, voters might punish them in the fall elections. On May 16, 1868, the Senate cast its first vote. Johnson needed to be convicted on only one of the 11 articles to be removed from office, but a conviction required two-thirds of the senators. During the trial, President Johnson kept a low profile. He abandoned his usual insult-laden speeches and instead spoke privately to senators. He promised to stop interfering with congressional legislation and to appoint a respectable person as Secretary of War if they did not vote to convict him. Bartering with justice. I thought justice was justice. Duh. Left to right seated, Benjamin F. Butler seated here. Benjamin F. Butler. Thaddeus Stevens. 
Thomas Williams, John A. Bingham, Standing, James F. Wilson, George S. Boutwell, and John A. Logan. So if you wanted to look those people up and find out more about their politics, you could. I just got to see if that picture is still in there and then I'll stop shaking. Okay. I realized for that 60th anniversary, I didn't really show those pictures long enough for you and well enough for you. I'm sorry about that. The senators first voted on Article 11, a sort of catch-all charge that summed up the other 10 articles. Seven moderate Republicans voted with the Democrats, and the vote was one short of the two-thirds needed for a conviction. The Senate voted next on the firing of Secretary of War Stanton. The same seven Republicans voted with the Democrats, and the result was the same. Johnson was acquitted by one vote. The writing was on the wall. The moderate Republicans were not going to convict President Johnson. James Grimes, one of those moderates, Explain his reason. I cannot argue to destroy the harmonious working of the Constitution for the sake of getting rid of an unacceptable president. There was no point in continuing. The Senate voted to halt the impeachment trial. African Americans were crushed. Not only was President Johnson going to remain in office, but the fact that some Republicans had allied with Democrats worried them. After the passage of the 14th Amendment, black people had finally begun to trust that the Republican Party was serious about racial equality. Now they were not so sure. But African Americans still had cause for hope. The presidential election of 1868 was only a few months away, and General Ulysses S. Grant, the general who had led the North to victory in the Civil War, was the Republican nominee for president. Hmm who basically left the South to be punished nada. That's nada pronounced in Espanol. Text of the world. Did you follow President Trump impeachment trials in 2019 and 2021? Yes, I did. 2019, almost every minute of it. 2020, I followed it about, I would have to say, probably about 75% of it. I did. How did they compare to Johnson's? Exactly the same. So there's, you know, arguments against evolution. Just saying. Social evolution. Social Darwinism. Yeah, screw you. Yeah, I don't think so. Social Darwinism. Where's the evolution, folks? One California woman said she had not bought new clothes for months because if Grant was not elected, she would never want anything more to wear for she would die. I'm, you know what? My clothes are so old and thanks for commenting on that too. Matt G over there commenting on that over at Charlie's. Uh, what did that jacket cost? $36.50. No, at one time it was an $80 jacket and I'm still wearing clothes from 25 years later that don't fit me. Why? Because I can't afford to even go to the secondhand store any longer and update my wardrobe. Thanks a lot, Oakland University and all you redneck fascists climbing on my wall. All you people making it all look like it's a whole bunch of, just a bunch of movies is all this country is about. Just a bunch of stars. That's what I was reading about in this other book too. In the 1930s to 40s, all that they did was build up Oh, MGM, you mean, uh, I forgot the first name, but Goldwyn Mayer? You mean like Bill Maher, Mayer? Bill Mayer? Bill Mayer! Pay attention! You're part of MGM! I heard you slurring your words. I did, Bill Mayer. San Francisco editor Philip A. Bell complained that the Republican Party called itself a reform party. He wrote that when lawmakers finally proved that Johnson was guilty and his conviction would restore peace, we find Republican senators standing in the way of the reform which his removal would produce. Yeah. 
Same thing. Exactly the same thing. So do you think, Dr. Farovich, that all of these Civil War reenactors have now come to the uh, Johnson administration reenactment? Is that what's going on here? They're trying to replay the outcome over here? The things you believe in. The things that you have faith in. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Just like your pretty potty. Grant defeated the Democratic nominee, New York Governor Horatio Seymour. His victory in the popular vote was only five percentage points closer than people had expected. However, Grant won the election vote by a landslide, 214 to 80, thanks to the 400,000 black men who voted for him. White people inflicted a lot of violence against black voters in the lead up to the election. Once the results were in, however, white Democrats seemed to rethink their situation. One Nevada man said, we should no longer sanction the bloody deeds. Let us no longer press the Negro and deny him a home in the land that gave him birth. Oh, oh, trying to win the, their vote now? Well, I was surprised there. The New Orleans Democrat agreed. The paper wrote that white violence had driven blacks into the Republican ranks and fenced them in there. If Southerners wanted Democrats back in power, they had to appeal to black voters. While Democrats did some soul searching, African Americans prepared to finally take their place as full citizens. Publisher Philip A. Bell said Grant's election was even more important than Lincoln's. It firmly establishes the Reconstruction Acts and shadows forth the speedy accomplishment of equal suffrage for all citizens, it was the dawn of a new day. Does anyone feel a collapse coming along? Key questions. Do you think Johnson's impeachment trial was fair? Why or why not? How effective is the impeachment in checking the powers of the executive branch? Well, clearly not that great. Vocab Lab. Write down what you think each word means. What root words can you find to help you? So those from early birds would be our homophones. No. No, 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 no. Those are our prefixes and su I don't know why I said that. Our prefixes and suffix. I do, because, you know, whatever. Uh, our prefixes and suffixes. Are we almost done? I think so. Uh with our Latin roots, Latin roots. So, so, the, so the meanings of root words as well as the meanings of our prefixes and suffixes. So that's what we're talking about. When you say, what root words can you find to help? What does the context of the word tell you? It would have been nice, Judy, had you bolded those in context for them. I agree that they should do be active about, but it's so hard to find them in context. It is. And we need to, and, and it's a good idea to see them in context, right? Acquit, bribery, disillusioned, impartial, impeach, prejudice, and treason. Compare your definitions with those of your friends or classmates. Did you all come up with the same meanings? Turn to the text and glossary if you need help. And that's likely going to give us our best context. There, are, there is an index, though. But in the index, I notice they don't have in the index all of the words either. And they should. So here, prejudice is not found here in the index. So the cross-referencing is not that great. But my guess is cross-referencing at times is not that great because when they have people approving this at the publishers, they're approving uh, very often an, uh, based on an agenda. And we do know that our historic agenda has been really um, to de-evolve humans. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's the end of this show. But let me check the time again. Yes, that is the end of this, this show for the Bookless Classroom. Now, we are getting there. Look at that, Com Commerce Township Library. Although that wasn't in White Lake, though. Interesting. So there we are.
Yeah, and now we're on the Inquire and Investigate. This is Dr. Annette Farovich. Thank you so much for joining me here in the Book With Classroom. Thank you so much for um, all of those viewers also um, that went with me and looked at these pictures with me um, on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, right? So I got teary-eyed over... Uh, much of what Jacqueline Kennedy was saying, she just seemed to be so totally in love with uh, Jack Kennedy. Why is he Jack and John? I think they were twins. I think they were twins. This is Dr. Annette Farovich. Thank you for joining me here in the classroom, and I will see you tomorrow in this bookless classroom. That's it. Thanks.